Okay, this is a test. This is the Bond Oversight Committee of May the 19th, Thursday. Thank you. hear me? I'll speak a little louder. Okay, uh, this is, uh, uh, I'm Roy Humphreys, this is my random act of helpfulness here for the Bond Oversight Committee here at Rolling Unified School District. Number one, uh, you are an independent committee and you must maintain that independence uh, by law. And that at Prop 39 the, says that the district is responsible for setting up the process. Once it's set up, it's your duty and responsibility to take charge of, and uh, progress with that. Training to a standard for all members is essential, otherwise you, you can't function as a team. And uh, Ms. Wendy Jones uh, comment of last meeting about uh, the situation with uh, Oswald and using uh, Fajardo was excellent. Save the district millions of dollars as far as the construction time and so forth. That should be in the annual report uh, to the people and also in the special report. And when it comes to money, we know that you can't trust anyone. You must be vigilant always. And the four grand juries, as stated previously, bear that out. And to nationwide incidents of corruption within school districts to which board members have been removed. Also, in these last meetings that I've observed, you've got, to, you've got a packet here. You have staff come up here and they're essentially reading it to you. That should be something that you should be engaged prior to me so you can come to the meeting and be productive and discuss the issues. Obviously, you have to be trained to a standard. Also, I'm asking that the 
uh, approval for last month's business be removed from uh, the agenda and that one, they were not provided on the internet for, not only for me, which um, as the community, representing the community, but the board to be able to, how can you possibly uh, say up or down on something that you haven't seen? And so I'm asking that to uh, be removed. That's also a Brown Act violation, which I'll be uh, filing uh, a complaint uh, uh, to that uh, issue. And uh, uh, the, uh, can, also in your relationship to the district, as I noted on the board uh, last uh, month, is that you can be friends and have a fr are friendly with the district, but you cannot be their friend. Otherwise, you have a, a dramatic conflict of interest. Thank you.
uh, 50 owner also, right? Of WLC Architects, who was working on the Roland project, uh, Roland District project. So with that, I'd like to invite him up to uh, begin his presentation. I have a business card here that helps. Good afternoon, evening, everybody. I'm Jim DiCamello, president of WLC Architects. We are the architect for the uh, Roland High School additions project. This is actually a presentation that I did for the board right around the holidays, actually. So, it's, so if anybody was at the, the uh, regular board of education meeting a few months back, you would have seen the same presentation. I was asked to come and basically just give you an overview of the Roland High School uh, additions project. And so we'll be going over uh, the scope of the project, the schedule of the project, and then actually just giving you sort of a 3D video of what the, what the scope is going to look like. So let's, let's talk about scope. In, in, my, in my world as an architect, you, you're, you're pretty much dealing with what are we going to do, how long is it going to take, and what's it going to cost. So today's uh, presentation is what are we going to do and how long is it going to take. There's a number of slides in here that, uh, and they're noted on, I think this is probably the laser pointer, yeah, they're noted on the bottom with their logo as well, which is Ledesma and Meyer, uh, our, our construction management partner in this project. They are, um, there's a number of slides in here that Larry Flickinger uh, with Ledesma and Meyer spoke to at the board, so I'll do my best to kind of go through those as well. But I thought it would be good if you saw the exact same presentation the board saw, because nothing has changed. This is the project. You guys are probably all familiar with the Roland High School campus, of which that's the vast majority of it in its existing condition. This is actually a little bit older photo. Uh, now you probably know of the new aquatic center, which, is, which was uh, recently completed there. The final project, and so I'm going to start with the end and then I'll show you how we get there. The final project are, are additions in a number of spots on the campus, but the, the goal, the major goal of the project was uh, and is to create a new front door to Roman High School and essentially to remove all portable classrooms from the site so that when we're done, uh, after a couple of years of construction, there will be no portable classrooms uh, left at Roland High School. Uh, at least not necessary because of this project. That doesn't mean the district will not keep some around for whatever reason. So uh, I'll go through and show you where how we get to uh, get to the end. Uh, we're going to look at basically just quickly at the timeline. This project is actually dates back. Uh, the first conceptual sketches of this were in September of 2012. True design started in uh, January of 2013. So over three years ago. Construction documents or blueprints in the, in the vernacular were, were in the uh, summer of 14, and we received DSA approval, which is your building department, uh, last summer, uh, and then have been doing pre bid coordination with the district and uh, Ledesma and Meyer, I'll call them LM for this purpose, uh, since essentially the holidays. So the project's uh, phasing is, is this is a project that will be built in multiple phases. Literally, build something then move on and build something else, not really overlapping. As Marcos is fond of saying, this, this project touches, let me back up, this project touches a significant amount of the campus. If we were to tear all of this up at one point, you wouldn't have much of a campus left while that was all going on. So the first phase of the project is a uh, two-story classroom wing, which goes basically where basketball courts are now. It doesn't replace anything but, but blacktop that's there. Uh, there, are no, there are no buildings where this building is going. And, and it's a relatively simple building. It's 22 classrooms, restrooms, again, two-story. It's a corridor down the center of the, uh, of the building. It's, it's a relatively simple building, and, and we'll hit the ground running with that initial phase. That, that, it's important to note that building, that, that two-story building, is really critical to this project because it essentially creates a life preserver or life raft for the future additions that will come. Since this adds square footage to the campus, we don't have to we don't have to bring in any interim housing portables to build this building. So we're going to use that building as interim housing as we continue through the phasing of the construction. And you'll see how that works here in a minute. The next major piece of construction is the new administration and library building. But unlike the classroom building, you know, if you know Roland High School, I assume you do, the existing administration building sits there, so it needs to be demolished to build a new one. To do that, we need to build a small or relocate a small interim housing 
uh, for the office, for the existing office, Mitch and his staff to move into. But in that process, remember, we will have already built this 20-some thousand square foot building. So we'll have additional square footage now on the campus to do some of this flip-flopping all at the same time. This building is again two stories. As I said, it's the administration building on the ground floor and the library media center upstairs. I don't expect you to read all of the plans, but this is oriented the same as what you just saw. So this is the street in front of the school here. And essentially there's a public end of the building and then sort of a student services end to the building on the ground floor. So that's pr primarily counseling and the like is now. All of these offices are spread all over the campus currently. Now they'll be consolidated. The other nice thing about this is it creates what we call in the industry a single point of entry to the campus. So from a security standpoint, you must go by the reception desk first before you're then allowed onto the campus. So um, most schools in California and in the United States are going to that type of an entry system. Question. Yeah. Entrance from the street, is that going to be um, public it's, access? It's closed now. There is a stairway that comes up to, from okay. the street. Now that's going to be gone. In the future, that is exactly what we're trying to replace. Well, I'm seeing doors. You just yeah, it's actually an electrical room. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go in there, but <laughs> you'll get shocked. No, it's, it's a, that's an electrical service room. Good, good eye. Yeah, you know, the main doors will be off of the parking lot, and uh, a, a, a prominent point of entry with a reception desk here. And then again, if you're allowed on campus, you either go out through here or out through here. There's a set of gates that close this off from the parking lot. Excuse me. Um, just. We want it to be really informal, so if there's any questions throughout the whole presentation, yeah, just holler. <laughs> just go ahead and, and, and we'll ask. So we have conversation. That was one of the requests also, there would be more time for, for discussion. This is your opportunity for discussion. So I'll, yeah. try to, I'll try to example that right now, to model that. So you, you talked about the interim housing? Yes. Um, the interim housing is, now that we're doing the staging, by building the two-story building first, it's going to not require to bring in portables so that we can house the children. Which is what you did at Nogales. Which we did at Nogales, and that is, there's a cost to set them up, there's a monthly cost to rent, and then there's a cost to send them back. And any modifications or any damage, I can ask Rosanna, she'll tell you, <laughs> there is a charge for that too. It's like renting the car. It is, it, it, it is, and they're always going to find a deal. So uh, there's always going to be a cost to that. Marcos, what is estimated that we determined that, that would be saving on this project by doing that? Or is the gym just, also involved? On this particular project, it was just shy of $2 million over the year. Okay. Yeah. So that's, it was somewhat of a luxury that we had that this site had an open spot to put that classroom wing. And so the whole project hinges on getting that class, that first piece built so that the next spaces can follow behind it. So, so don't don't think there was not going to be any sort of temporary housing. There is going to be some yes. up by the, the tennis courts or administration buildings, but instead of having like thirty, there might be six or seven. So, I, I just wonder that's something that we think about to analyze it so we keep down the, the soft cost of a project. So you mean that uh, the green part, that line, was a, uh, currently the public boulevard? Currently, well, there's nothing there. There's just black. No. There's just uh -huh. basketball courts. The there. question: the, the portables that are all the way to the back, oh, way in the back. Those, those, those will those will stay in use in the beginning, in the, in the first okay. phase. So the car you view the permanent on the green the house. This way. Mm -hmm. That what's right now, right? Now, it's it's field. It's, it's empty. Grass. There's nothing. It's there. a grassy it's area. It's half grass and half blacktop. Why would you after you build that you move the animation to there temporary? We you, talked about that, you but need I, to build. why do you have to spend money to build another portable? No, hang on. There's uh, there are portables here now in this location. So this is a. It's hard to show all of this in phases because it's a very complicated phasing plan. So these portables here will remain. This adds twenty thousand square feet of usable space. Some functions will go there, but you don't want the front of your school in the back. There's no way to get there as a parent right. in a secure environment. So. The front will be moved over to this end of the parking lot, and some of these functions that are currently in these rooms will go into that new building. So there's very little what we call interim housing in this project. It's mostly a bunch of moving people around, what, but you still want your principal up at the front of the school. Yeah. What do you build the portable? Is it in the tennis pool over there? Uh, no, there will be when the uh, infrastructure project was built at this campus a couple of years ago. 
there was a set of portables, you may recall, that was right here. Some of the utility work for that is still there, so it's really a plug-in, uh, plug-and-play sort of to put it back in with the temporary. As I said, it's a very small piece of this project. It's uh, not, not a significant uh, thing on this project. Out of curiosity, what, what was the infrastructure that was put in? Electrical. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they just upgraded it. Oh no, they oh, on the whole campus. Marcos can speak. It was it was all the dry and wet utilities. It was electrical, low voltage, fire alarm, uh, communications, storm drain, and sewer. Okay. But over, I thought you were speaking to this over here. Over here was electrical. That was just temporary mm -hmm. housing. We rarely rarely run plumbing. No, no, they set up the front. And yeah, yeah, that's just that's just that's electrical in that area. So getting, so getting back, that's the administration building, sort of went through that quickly. And then upstairs, above it, it's a two-story building, above it is the library. So the library and media center, one of the original requests of the school district when we were first hired a few years back was to have one uh, larger open space classroom. So this is actually three sort of unassigned classrooms that, that can be opened up for larger uh, project-based instruction. There is a similar space to this at the new Nogales building, and thus the parity between the schools. So this is the main, this is where the book stacks are in the main reading room off of the reception or circulation desk for the libraries. So you come up, come up these stairs from inside the campus, there is an elevator, uh, and then you come into the library and then back again, out again. I have a quick question. Sure. Purchasing the books to restock the new library, is that coming out of bond funds or is it going to be for another budget? Uh, we have some money set aside in the LCAP for, for library books, so we probably use those money for the books. We look at like furniture and equipment more of a, That's why I was asking. Yeah, more less instructional, but more of uh, tables and things like that. So how big are the library? The um, library in total is about 11,000 square feet. That's including a classroom space. Yeah. So first of all, it's on the second. This is it's the, the building is about eleven thousand square feet on each floor. Uh -huh. So the library is the, you know the second floor of the building. So you take out these three classroom spaces, then the library is about eight thousand square feet. It's about it's about half again to double the size of the existing library, so which is being demolished. The inside is like what open area. Uh -huh, pretty much. It's open. These are the these are the book stacks here, and then this is all uh, student seating uh, with vision with vision from the circulation list. When you're designing a school library, visual <laughs> access to the kids is important. There's also a computer lab in the library. Hard to see here, but this is the glass walls that the, the uh, uh, librarian can look into the computer lab where they're accessing information in there. And then there's a large sort of conference and meeting room at the, at the back end. What's, what's generally lacking in schools are places to have meetings, and, and instruction has changed a lot in the last few years. How big the conference room? That, that conference room is about uh, about 400 square feet, so about half the size of this room. It's about like that. Uh -huh. I'll get that you said similar to the one in uh, Dallas? The library? The, the building. No, I have no. I don't actually have. Any. Yeah, this room is similar to the one, and I'm sorry, this this is what I was speaking of, important to the district. Your schools, your high schools, pretty much have a bunch of standard classrooms, but very few spaces where people can gather in larger groups, which is important. So in, in both campuses, the request of the architects was to create a space where you could open up some of these rooms and do more than just, you know, 30 kids and a, and a teacher. So or say that if you want to have a staff meeting, they can take you can do it in there. And a staff yeah. meeting. One of the things right at Nogales, uh, Henry, is that one of the things the lessons learned from the Nogales project was the issue with having technology in place for kids and working computers. And then it was something that wasn't really thought before in the plan, and then there was some drops put in. And uh, this, this building here takes into consideration having it and actually identify a room that's going to be for technology for, for kids. We've spent a lot of time, remember I said in that time with L&M and ourselves in the district, we spent a lot of time going through all of the plans and building all of that in schools. And I don't know if you know who WLC is, we're one of the leading K-12 architects in the Western United States. Schools are changing significantly right now in the way that they access technology. You wouldn't see any of this stuff a few years ago. Uh, now we're building it in everywhere, but it makes the buildings very complicated. There is a lot of systems involved that all have to be uh, worked out when we go. 
and they have to be flexible because a long construction project will see some changes in that technology even during the course of the, my, my younger brother works for Google and he's inventing things right now that we don't even know about today <laughs> so you, you have to be quick on your feet so that arrow there is pointing to that building. So there, there is the new front door to answer your question. The old front door, which has steps here on uh, Otterbein, right, uh, is going away, and the new front door will be here. There's a breezeway that connects the administration building to what the school calls the hideout, which is essentially their multi-purpose room. So the next major element of the program, highlighted again now in the light green here, is this is the, the hideout, which is the multi-purpose room, the new kitchen, and then the new district performing arts building. Uh, next to it are uh, supporting uh, music and performing arts spaces, which adjoin the stage to the to the theater. So this this sort of square you see here is is the theater. So I'll show you the. For orientation, we flipped it so it fits on the page. So if you if you think about it, that breezeway is here, the parking lot is here, the administration building is sitting right here. So this is the new multi-purpose room, which has. Uh, uh, Accessibility to restrooms, so if you're having an evening thing at the multi-purpose room, they can use uh, restrooms. And there's a kitchen, which is sitting in between now. Its service will go out to the parking lot. Staff dining room, and then service windows that go out to the quad, and I'll talk about the quad in a minute. The new performing arts center sits next to it, uh, with seating, stage, backstage, scene shop, and the uh, lobby and entry with restrooms, ticket booth, and uh, concession stand. This is a true performing arts building, and it will be a district facility. Uh, next to it, sort of backstage or side stage, is the new band room and choral room, off of it with uh, instrument storage spaces and practice rooms uh, adjoining it. There's dressing rooms that adjoin the theater. We have one of the top uh, theater designers in the United States who works with us on all of this, designs all the acoustics, all the lighting, all the stage scenery, so uh, it's going to be a top-notch uh, facility all, all around. Import are, are the band and the corral rooms getting more square footage? Yes, have yes significantly more square footage. It was a big deal during the course of the construction. Both of those departments or, or instructors were very involved in the design of this. It's a good, good question. And yes, they are. Well, it'll never be enough, though, right? No, no it's, it's, never, right. it's never enough. Yeah. How many people are theater? The seat list, it's a little under 600. 600. And it is a, you know, floor, right? it is a sloped floor. Yeah, no balcony. Do that balcony, no? In high schools, that's generally a challenge for supervision. Sure. We do them, but it's <laughs> tough to supervise. <laughs> what is nice about it, it does have a cross aisle. Uh, uh, rooms like this are often used for lots of different things. So there's a cross aisle, so you can do a smaller performance here with less seating, and then have you know the full-on auditorium. It's not it's not stadium seating like you see in a movie theater these days. It's a sloped or what's called a raked floor in the in the business. But it's going to be a very 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 nice facility. Interesting to note. If we showed everything that's being removed, there's currently a building that sits right here, and it's called the JAR, which stands for John A. Rowland, I think. Uh, that, that is your kitchen and, uh, and sort of career tech classroom spaces. That's going to remain. About half of it remains, but half of it's getting torn down to eventually build the new food service component. Your kitchen for a high school of this size is very small, uh, as, as was often the case in schools built in that era. And so this points to that building there. And so that's that's the new hideout. That's the new dining room for the faculty sitting there. That's the, the access to the service for the kitchen. That's the back house stage of the theater, which does have a full fly tower. And you can just sort of see the band and coral room peeking out behind it. There is a full scene shop at the back of the stage, which is where they make production flats and, and paint scenery for the, for the theater. Where are they going to get temporary towels? All of that. It all gets moved into uh, well, the, the spaces that are there right now is primarily the hideout. That's primarily what's there, the multi-purpose. There are portables that sit back in here that we're going to repurpose into that space just temporarily while this building is being built. That's really what's there. And, there, and there's also a... like the band room is kind of big. Yeah, the, but the band room isn't here. The band room's actually over in here right now. So the, the band is staying where it okay. is during the course of construction. Good question. As I said, this is a logistical issue. Now, what I do want to point out, and I think is probably the, I personally think is the, I don't know if you, my, my partner, 
of 30 years went to Roland High School. He was a basketball player, so I had to pr I had to promise we weren't going to touch the gym. But uh, but yeah, my, my one of my partners at WLC is a Roland High School graduate. That was my but the uh, but one of the things that's really going to make this project is the new quad, because Roland High School doesn't really have a congregational space in the center of the campus. So the kids, if you go there now, are basically lined up along the edge of the hideout and other buildings, because the library sits right there now. The new campus, this will become the heart of the campus, which is this new quadrangle space, which gets created once the library is, is essentially demolished and put on top of the administration building. That will serve this campus for many years to come and make it a much more cohesive uh, instructional and just student body life environment. There's two other little pieces that end the project, and that is the construction of a new ASB and student store building, which will, which will flank the end of the quad, because it's located at the end of the jar right now. And then the special education rooms, which are in portables right now, they're there to access bus and pick up off this, that will, those will be removed and a permanent uh, special education center will be built there at the end of the parking lot. Those are the two last little pieces that, that stitch it all together. And here are those two buildings. Right now you have a very small student store and really not much of an ASB area at all. So now you'll have the student store at ASB the way that they like them, which is next to each other. These two rooms work in conjunction, storage for the store and the like and then a three-classroom special education suite with built-in restrooms and conferencing centers. This is really important in special education to have spaces where people can be assessed and work individually versus just in a big classroom environment. Are we losing the outdoor stage? Uh, the outdoor stage in the... Quasi-quad quad, right yes. off of... Yes, I don't even really think of it that way, but yes. Yeah, a new one's being built. Yeah, it's one's being so built. we're not so, losing. Okay. Yeah, so a new one's being built. It's being demolished. A new one's being it's built being at, the, at the north end of the quad. Yeah. Okay. So when you build the terminal for the special education yes. space, so where do they locate the space? In the meantime, they're going into the new building. Okay. Because it has service access to get kids in and out of there along the northern um, road at the north end so of the campus. So based on schedule, when do you do? First, you build the. I'm going to show you in a second how all this stitches together. But that, what I just showed, the cartoon of it, is pretty much how it goes in sequence. So the, this presentation was organized for the board, so you can, you, this is the order that everything will indeed get done. So this gives you a couple of quick ideas of the, of the final renderings of what the school will look like. They're almost so realistic anymore that it may be a little boring when the school is finally built because it's going to look like that. So that's, that's, what you, that's what the final buildings look like. A brand new phase to Roland High School. That's the library. That's the office underneath. That's the main entry. That's the, the new hideout. And that's the Performing Arts Center right there. This is inside the quad. So you're now in the quad looking back at that building. So that's the library over the office. That's the multi-purpose or hideout room. And you're just seeing the edge of the uh, uh, front of the theater here. Just to show you, and I found this to be fascinating, when we go back and forth, those were the original concept renderings. The, our drawings are now, our blueprints are now done in 3D. They're not 2D drawings at all anymore. They're actually three-dimensional. And we can print them in 3D. So this is the actual final look of the campus. Those were done a couple of years ago. This, these two views are from the same angle. And so you can see the final construction drawings look pretty much like those renderings. So when you always see in the paper, you know, this is an artist's conception, and it is. The final school, not as romantic with the people and the like, but the final school is pretty much that. So it, your, the school will look, this comes right off of the construction drawings in school. So just real quickly, here's how it's going to go down in terms of construction. And this is the part that Larry did with Ledesma and Meyer when he was here. That's that space that's going to get demoed for the classroom building. Important to the whole project is this, what we call sort of an umbilical cord, which is this access road, which will come in from the back. You can imagine, that, and now you can see the pieces of what was underneath it all. It was grass and blacktop. There's those portables. There's the existing admin. So you can imagine, to build this stuff, you, we have to get away into this campus so that we're not disturbing the ongoing educational program. This school is going to be open this whole time this is going does on. It, does that two-story footprint touch those bungalows? It looks like it. No, it doesn't. The, the footprint of the building, it's, I'm fond of saying 
uh, to lay people. Uh, you don't build a building with tweezers, you build it with a bulldozer. So there is quite a halo that goes on to okay. compact the ground under the building. So they have to hog out a bunch of dirt, compact it all back again to build the pad. But no, we're not touching the locker building or the adjacent classroom wings. Yeah. Good question. So that's essentially the first thing that gets built. And this access road will actually remain on the campus all the way through and out to the end. Uh, the school thought it was a great idea to have a second means in and out of here for service. So that access road is going to remain. So in, then now the other building has been built. There's that interim admin, which is actually the buildings that are there, just converted into uh, office spaces, okay? So that we can build this. So we're losing parking lot. Uh, you're going to lose a skosh. There's a technical term. We have to do the same thing here, but this is flexible. This is again just a diagram. Oh, so um, that's for for construction. Right? Yeah. Again, we got to dig a hole. Oh, okay. <laughs> so a big one because the theater is almost five stories tall. So so we have to dig a big hole around it, and they will need some ability to access some of this just with construction equipment because this is going to be built with a crane. So, um, yeah, that's the logistical part of it. But Ellen has done this with us on other campuses, and, and the idea is to make as soft of a footprint as possible. We re all we do is schools. So we realize that there is uh, you know, an ongoing program going on there. Okay. There is, uh, th if you were watching real closely, you'll notice that this is now showing some of the phasing within phasing. And then at the very end of the project, so you've seen all that already, at the very end of the project come three little pieces. And that is we will no longer need those portables, thank goodness, you're, you're, you won't have portables anymore at this school. So those portables will go away. This is intended to become a, a parking lot area in the back and a custodial compound for the school. We're going to finally dress up the last of the landscaping along Otterbein and re renovate, uh, redo whatever you want to think of it as the parking lot, the main parking lot. If, for those who have been to Roland, you'll know that parking lot is pretty mundane. Uh, and so one of the board's requests of, of me as the architect was to, Jim, can you please dress up our parking lot in the end with, uh, with uh, trees and proper lighting and the like. And so that, that will happen. Is it going to be uh, regrade? Uh, yeah. Regrade yeah. And not a lot because we have to tie it into the stadium and the street, but a little. Yeah, it gets a little bit. And it's getting used for it's getting, it's completely getting hogged out and rebuilt. Oh. Yeah, in the final summer of the, of the project when everything's gone. Yeah, it will be completely gone. So back to your question, this is showing the sort of the cadence of this going through and what, <coughs> hard to read, this is not an eye chart and I didn't create it, the construction manager did, but hopefully you can see and hear those schedules. So that's the classroom way. This is the admin and library, and then this is the theater, and then the final parking lot piece coming in down here. Really important to know what are these gray bars. In my line of work, these are the most important months of the year, not Christmas, but summer. Uh, that's the, our biggest opportunity to do a lot of work as fast as possible while the school is uh, got less people at it. There's always some administrative core there. So the, we pay a lot of attention to where these summers hit. And really important to the schedule is this first yellow bar, which is the construction of the classroom wing. We're sitting right here right now in, in May, June. To be able to get that classroom wing built and online for school year, I was at 2017, 2018. So it's ready in the fall to begin the rest of this. You might want to, you might ask, what's this bumblebee running through the middle of it all? All throughout it, and Alex mentioned earlier, there is this plugging in and unplugging of technology that goes on. So there's all of the phases. This is how you stitch all of these systems together so that they stay operational the whole time. This school can't be without a computer network, a phone system, while we're plugging and unplugging these buildings. So that's what, that's what this is indicating at that time to the board, was that really critical. But you'll see that the projects tend to be following those summers to try and move in at, uh, during the summer, or start during the summer, and move in the next summer for the start of the next school. Yeah. So with the low voltage, are you guys going to float those technologies to another spot until you guys make that admin building? Yes. Yeah. There's an interim brain <laughs> for that for everything because a, a, techno, a technology network is really a, a, a spoke and wheel. It's a trunk of a tree and branches. So we have to create a new brain. We have to create a new core. 
that's being created on the campus in a temporary location so that everything can keep plugging and playing off of it, then that's backfed into the future admin building. So are you upgrading or are you keeping the same? In the beginning, we're keeping it alive, and, but in the end, it gets upgraded. So it's a mixture. And it's going to be backward compatible to make sure that it yeah, that's been a lot of the work, I point at Marcos, that we've been doing for the past couple months because these technologies are changing all the time. And so it's like speaking in, in DOS versus basic. These, all of these systems don't all talk to each other the same. So we've had a number of meetings with the, the instructional technology staff here at the district to make sure that all the new technologies, one of the critical ones is fire alarm because it too is a low voltage system. It has to remain operational through all of this. It's complicated, but we think we've got it nailed. And it, it will continue to evolve. Just because this project is done, and we can all meet back here in 2019 to see how we did, just because this project is done doesn't mean the school won't continue to evolve, and my brother won't continue to invent stuff. So you know, the, the, it all has to be flexible throughout. We're very used to these processes anymore. I wouldn't doubt that somewhere along this line, something is going to change in the way that the Roman Unified School District buys a new system, does something to, to throw a hook in it, but we think we've got a flexible plan. Change is normal when it comes to uh, IT systems. But again, just reiterate, the summers are crucial for, yeah, that's, for any of these that, projects. Yeah, that and that and that. And it was really uh, nice working with both the architect and the design because this 2016, originally there was a lot of thought about having that just completely shut down, <laughs> but you know, with the pool, uh, the aquatics, with the adult uh, Mount Sac summer school program, yeah. we found a way. We worked together with Marcos and everybody sitting down and problem solving with the principal to really be able to be open this summer. We may not have that luxury the next summer, no. But you know, at least this summer, and it's working together. You know, on their weekly meetings has been really been powerful because there's so much stuff that's happened beforehand. We're here, but they're like been working on it for, for a long time. Thank you, Alex. And I, I, will, I will say, again, this is the only work we do. We're very used to it. But it is very complicated. Part of my job tonight is to make it look easy. It is. There are meetings that go on every single week about all of this, all the way through construction. So there is a, a tremendous amount of coordination with district staff, the site staff, the contractors, the construction managers. This is a... This is a, I do this everywhere, this is a very complicated project for the school district. I have a question. So you mentioned you integrate a lot of new technology. Yeah. Like what? Well, what you're going to find happen, if I, if you let me put my sort of, I speak on this all over the state. Okay? If, what, what's going to happen in schools, and it's beginning to happen everywhere, and all districts are in a different state of this right now, but you will soon be in a totally wireless environment. And the, and the data is going to be coming in this district and everywhere because the state and the Fed is pushing for it, is that you will get to a point where all of the students, if I get my thing, I will, I'll give you the speech I give to my clients all over the state of California. The day is coming when the kids you will no longer be telling your students to put this thing away, it's time to get to work. You will be telling your kids, take that thing out, it's time to get to work, or something like it. All technology is changing from what I originally designed 35 years ago in schools to what we're designing today. The idea is not to have spaces where the kids go visit the computers. The idea is to get the computer with the kid. It's the same thing when you think about a car phone. The idea was not to have a phone in your car, it was to have a phone with you. And that has now come to reality. So schools are changing drastically in the way that they, uh, instruction is done and the way that information is accessed. And so this, so you'll, you'll see this happen over the years. It'll change during the course of this. And so, so what did you use? We use what kind of we, we're in project? We're in limbo right now in most of California. Um, so you're not you're not unique there. This everybody is is sort of making this shift together. So we have to have systems that work. So we're in a semi wireless environment right now in this design, and that's pretty much the case. But we do have wireless access ports throughout the buildings so that you can access information without being plugged into a wall. That's that's really where it's all going. The way you design, you don't want them to design so that the four walls and what's in it drives the instruction. Correct. Right. The instruction drives the design. Right. So, you know, and, and Jim makes a good point that 
all schools, and Rolling Unified is one of them district that's been evolving. We're doing a pilot program for technology. We have thousands of devices that are out there right now that are being tested by our teachers yeah. to see what is the best device for our kids. And then that will drive what we'll do. Now you have to have sustainability also. Because you don't want to have a nice little laptop or and it's here today and it's gone tomorrow during right. the lifespan about you know three to five years. So you have to make sure you build something so that it's going to be able to you know, sustain, and that's why I look at Eric, because we have to make sure we can pay for it <laughs> years down the road. So, um, you have to have that flexibility, so if you start off with a four to one device, that the goal ultimately would be one to one device. That's correct. But that's ultimately your goal, but you can't start there, you have to, you have to build yourself and get to that point. I always tell my guys that the John Glenn going around the earth a couple of times was not the goal. The goal was to get to the moon and back. You have to start somewhere. You have to start getting it in and start working with the instructors. But you, your campus wants to be wireless with access points. And Everywhere. It, and the access point needs to be a plug-in. So you want to make sure that you design your, your buildings and your, so that you have your runs to be able to plug, so you can have something to plug into. And, and Pat's laughing over there because <laughs> we're faced with that all the time in some of our older schools. There's not enough access points that we're running around scrambling to put access points in so that when you have a classroom, you're doing testing with 30 kids, and you have a very classroom with 30 kids at 60, well, guess what? You need two access points now. Right. One for three wasn't there, and that's what we're upgrading as we go too. But the flexibility when you design to be able to do that, and that's what we're looking at more drops. You know, more as we look at other devices that we can connect to. My favorite commercial on TV right now, for Verizon, AT&T, or one of them, is where they have all the cartoon characters trying to get through a door. But the door's too small, so they're all piled up against the door. You need to open up that door to access more, more bandwidth, more information. If every kid enrolled in high school is accessing information off the internet or off of the local network, that's more computers that are on in the entire neighborhood that feeds into Rollman High School during the day. So it's a lot of bandwidth. It's a big pipe. But ultimately, to answer your question, that's where that's where education is going. It's getting there at a light speed change. The biggest change I've seen in my over three decades of doing work. We went from blackboards to whiteboards, and that was a big deal. <laughs> this is nothing like that. This is the biggest change. It changes the way every way you teach, the way you learn. Everything. It's very exciting. We just uh, we're doing an ELA adoption next year. When you do an ELA adoption or a book adoption, you test them. You test the different books, and you test the different different things out there. And I was just speaking to some teachers yesterday that said that on the committee that from the six to twelve in ELA, there's like two vendors are pretty much all digital. They, they, everything right. is pretty much digital, so it's going to be really intense with the devices and be able to to use that instruction. Because really, remember, what drives us is what's best for kids in the classroom is what? Instruction. And everything that we do is to support instruction. That's what we're here for, is to educate our children. It's, so, it's going to change drastically. My daughter just got her master's degree. In six years of school, we bought her an HP printer and cartridges the first day she walked out to campus. You know how many times we replaced the cartridges? Never. Not once. Never. Never printed anything. They email their homework, she emailed her graduate thesis, the homework is emailed to her, she emails it back. All this paper is all going to be going away. All this paper, yeah, yeah your textbooks, they're, print, they're made digitally. They have to print them on paper and give them to you. They believe me, they would rather email you a new textbook upgrade when a country somewhere in the world changes just like the app on your phone will change, and suddenly you'll have the new map of the world. And it gets, gets upgraded every few months. So all it's going to change drastically the way we do All of these changes makes it difficult for a bond oversight and one of the responsibilities. And there's been very few changes in Proposition 39, uh, except that uh, they, they did uh, say review efforts by the district to maximize bond revenues by implementing cost setting. And then the, the only change in where we need to update our bylaws is to include this, uh, that, what they specify uh, in that, because we haven't done that yet. But uh, we had an attorney read all this to us. 
the mechanisms designed to reduce the cost uh, of professional fees, mechanisms designed to reduce the cost of self provision, recommend, recommendations regarding the joint uh, core facilities, mechanisms designed to reduce the cost by incorporating efficiencies in uh, school site design, and recommendations regarding the use of cost efficient and efficient reusable uh, facility plans. Okay? And I asked the question at the, at the last meeting about reusing plants. And the, you know, the, the, the remark I got, oh, you want us to use obsolete plants that, that don't meet current design you know, standards? I said, no, I want you to use some other designs in other schools that uh, have already been used and all of the bugs and all of the uh, change orders have been uh, uh, taken care of. You know? So I guess my question, you know, out of the hundreds of uh, yeah. buildings being designed, there, there are none that, you know, you just, I, I know it's not financially in the interest of the architects to just say, oh, oh I, I have, have, that's, I have that's, a design that you know, from another school. I could, I could Harry, let me tell you, that is not how architects are trained. That is not how we think at all. We're here to service you. In your particular case, you have a very unique campus. It's not, we do repeat schools all the time, all the time, but not on additions to an existing school where we have all these parameters to work around. It's like virtually impossible to find a, a foot that would fit that slipper exactly. I mean, it's again, you have very, very finite areas to build in. But, 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 hang on, but, Within the buildings, within the buildings, there is a lot of repetition and that savings, not in the outside of maybe what the building looks like, but within the buildings, there is a lot of repetition and efficiency and in our design work that goes with it. We don't sort of just start over from scratch, but yeah, you can't just pull up. You're never gonna be able to find a building that's gonna fit this exact shape to fit on the Roland High School campus. But within the buildings, oh yes, there's a tremendous amount of that that goes on in the mechanical systems, the structural systems, all the all the parts that make up the building, if that, if that helps. So there's a lot of that that goes into it, you know. Well, yeah, I guess it answers the question that, that uh, the work, what efforts are being made to uh, reduce the, uh, the cost of it. Uh, we're supposed to answer that question. Yeah, and here, here's the answer. And I've tried to hit on those, most of this has been an informational meeting, and I hope it's helped. I uh, tried to hit on it in the way that there's been a lot of thought all the way along about how to do this and leave as little waste behind when we're done, or to waste as little while it's going on. In other words, build it once, move into it, and be done with it. Because those are hidden costs that you never get back. So I would say the biggest thing that's going on on this project is that. Early on, though, in the project, buildings like this don't just come out of uh, the proverbial thin air. I mean, I'm a professional licensed architect. We design it to fit within the systems that are there at the campus with the construction technologies that are available today and what's a cost-effective solution. You could build these buildings out of a lot of different things, wood, concrete, steel. We pick, we pick the systems that are the most efficient for this type of construction in this area. And some of it's speed to get in and out of there as quickly as we can so that the time is money in the construction. So all, there is a lot of cost engineering that goes into all of this. It goes into everything we do. And, and I appreciate the, the comment. I totally well, our job is our job in the district also to make sure we put the cost down so that the yeah. more money we have we can be for our kids. Absolutely. But all in fairness to you, to you Jim, it, like you said, I look at the slide, it's a 2012-2011 thing all started. <laughs> These are great questions that you're asking, Mary, as we move forward to other projects and in the initial infancy stages, like for example Oswald where we're looking at just talking about getting input and asking questions to the architect of what design, what type of issues, or what type of things, mega do you have in place to reduce costs? So in all fairness, you know, I don't... I, but they were asked on this, asked man. Just, I think I was probably the only one in the room at that time, but okay. they were asked on this project at well, that time. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. See, but I think, I think the key to these new buildings is the fact that they're gonna be completely wireless. I mean, like, it, there won't be, well, that Future, completely a need wireless. For, well, I mean, eventually, I mean, there won't be a need for buying books, you know, which I think yeah, you will is actually an equalizer. Yeah. I think it's an equalizer because there's a lot of, you know, uh, school boards in this country that have more money maybe and have 
quote unquote better books, but if you could download a PDF of a book in South LA, Roland Heights, and Beverly Hills, the same book, then I think that that would promote more equality in terms of the, the information that's given. You know, and plus the idea that you know when uh, you know when people are. I remember when our kids were going to Roland High School. Our kid was going to Roland High, and he, you know, was having difficulty. He was, you know, not, you know, he, he had learning problems. But my idea was, why don't you just give him a computer? He can't write very well. I mean, he understood what writing was, but he couldn't make it look right. But he could use a computer, and it was completely considered too radical at that time. And they said, well, "What do you mean, a computer?" We can't give what, what you know, year? What year was it? Well, it was. Um, <coughs> it's the mid nineties. Yeah, late nineties. Yeah, it was just. It was just coming in. It was just coming into play at that time. I mean, my, right. I started and practicing in the early eighties in California. And it was like considered. What do you mean, give him a computer? It was computer? groundbreaking. Time, yeah. What do you mean? I said, well, it just makes sense because, you know, the kid is having a difficult time writing, but if he can type it in, you know. And, you know, it was, you know, so to me, this whole idea that it's becoming much more today, I think, is worth a whole lot more than, you know, what kind of, you know, building it Well, the buildings are not monuments to themselves. And yeah. I'm not trying to make a no, monument to Jim DiCamillo. You're 100% you're <laughs> correct. The idea, these are tools for education, these buildings, and they're very functional buildings, um, functioning in an environment that's changing all the time. So you want to have buildings that adapt. On the fly. So with that said, what is the density for the new buildings? Uh, the density. Piece? I'm sorry. Because you guys are actually you're building the the, the, um, the rooms right. for educational purposes. So I'm I'm guessing you're going anywhere between 30 and 40 students in a room for access for it available. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So at 35, so I'm thinking just to meet the density of that particular class, if everybody had a device, it would right. be actually two AP's. That's correct. Yeah. They're so very. Is they're it being design is it being built with two AD? Yes, the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. The idea would be to have everybody in the in the school able to access the information. The tests the tests are all taken on the computer. It's good. Uh, no, no, the the other conversation we have and I'm not saying something. I'm, I'm definitely not an expert on that. And I let the experts decide that and look at that work on that. And this is something that what I do is make sure that it's a team concept that everyone has their input and have their say, and they're, they're talking to each other. Um, what we don't want is like an architect and to come in and just make the design and we go. No, they work for you. They work for us. <laughs> the other way around. And, and that's what, you know, and I want to make sure it's clear, is it's, it's not that way. It's, yeah. it's yeah. we work with us, and we, here's what we need, here's our demand. And but we I'll do show six months ago, it would a different conversation than it is today. That's correct, and six months from now, it'll be different. Yeah. We work all over the state, and so we do show the district things that we're seeing other Pretty people do. It's a, it's, a, it's a back and forth and the districts are in different states of development. Just out of curiosity, what other technologies are being put in? Like, is it mic and speaker? Is it, um, uh, you're, talking about, uh, you're talking about like a, a voice enhancement system yes, voice in, enhancement. in the school. You know, I don't honestly recall if these have them or not in the classroom. Is it, is it, I, uh, is the market uh, walks in place? We are you will eventually move past the smart board is a uh, is a corporation like Kleenex. Uh, yeah, uh, so smart boards we're in an we're in a mode of evolution on smart boards right now in the industry, and so we're we're right in that middle between them still so using them. projectors as well because uh, your projector would be actually as a, actually no we're in a mode away from those now it's evolving out of the projector mode and into the flat screen mode. These these things these bulbs you know uh, they're not they're not intended to be on eight hours a day these bulbs you know when Epson makes that machine and so uh, they wear out the bulbs and then they cost a fortune to replace so we're in we're in that uh, gap in the trapeze so to speak right now and many districts are now moving to more of a flat screen monitor because they're cheaper and you can do use them as a smart board basically and it gets rid of the mount in the ceiling and the wires and everything. So it's it's in that's a technology. This is all I do for a living. It's in limbo right now in, in districts as we go. And remember, this is sort of like talking to um, Mars with the with the Viking landing on Mars. 
This building won't be done for another year and a half. That is a long time in technology. <laughs> so we're trying to throw out ahead of the receiver. So we could, we could have a presentation made by our technology department. I think that'd be great for about you guys. what are some of the technologies that we're yeah. integrating. Where it's all going. Where it's all going. So, so that everyone hears it and because it's not just for this project. We're having the same conversation that I had last week in Oswald when we had input meetings about what it would speed and what's one. So I, I speak on this all over the state. It is changing drastically. I, I almost six the minutes where you feel like that you might the um, the way we went to school is not the way your kids are going to go to school. Not the way they're going to learn, not the way they're going to teach. Our kids are humongous change. Oh, huge. So you mentioned yeah. this campus is not wireless. Uh, no campuses are truly wireless. They will have a backbone of fiber in the current vernacular. And then what you want to do is get to a point where within a room you have access. Like going to a Starbucks. You're not wired to a Starbucks. When you go to a Starbucks and get out of your phone and you have access to everything on the planet, you, you have wireless access within the room. It's a wired, called okay, wireless access, access point. Board. And an access point gives you wireless. The infrastructure that's put right. behind it's kind of the spine of the nervous system. And that's that's exactly which, right. Yeah. And which we've done as a district, and we've upgraded that from a hundred to a thousand gigabytes, so that we can have right. it's a lot of information. And then go question. upgrade from because there's there's a there's going to be a bottleneck from the district to the county, so they'll yeah. increase that one from the county from the district to the county, so that there isn't any, any bottleneck. Right. Do, do you remember right. this? Yes. Yeah. Right. You remember the time when the dial-up modem came in and everybody made the funny noise and it didn't work and all what is all this sort of stuff. We have evolved past that at light speed and you've now gotten very accustomed to, every one of you have them and can talk to just about anybody on the planet from what's ever in your purse or your pocket. This and is all changing fast. And I appreciate this conversation because this is exactly like, it's like one of the meetings. It's like we're talking about one thing and then bringing the experts in to talk about How do you get that to happen? Talk about it's got to be seamless. It. It's, it's yeah. for, it to work in, for it to work instructionally, it has to be seamless. You can't have kids waiting around to connect before they can answer a test question. It has to be seamless. And it's getting good. Yeah. You're already saying let's move it along. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I do do that. <laughs> We showed this to the board and it was a walk through, but it's on our last slide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. building on the left, coming through the library up above, uh, and the quad in the center of the campus. This is the access to the theater, so you can see the ticket booth off on the one side, and you can see the quad. Well, where's the part in the front that was you know, the science building? It was just completed. Oh, that's right here. I'm sorry, I, need, I was trying to remember what you were thinking. That's right there on Otterbein, right behind the, right to the north of the new administration and library building. Well, none of that's going to be changed. No, of course not. Actually, just that's a good good example of not changing stuff you just built, yeah. and that's a big deal here. Is because so much work was done, we're trying to work around things without tearing up a line that was just installed. It's a it's a very complicated project, and hopefully you understand it a little bit better now based on all this. Not Any other questions? Did you email us? Did you email us? 
you know, we probably, it's a lot, it's a big it's, file. We, <laughs> we couldn't open it up, so did you bring a thumb drive on your job? Yeah, I did. Uh, uh, but you have it now, it's embedded in that, so it's yeah, embedded. we can we have it now? We can make a link to it that you can just yeah. click on from we'll, your we'll home computer. We'll make a link to it, because uh, unfortunately, when it, was sent, it was just such a big file that we couldn't open it. Yeah, like it's it. many megabytes. That's why you have copies. Yeah, the power yeah. Yeah. Any well, other questions for me while I'm here? Thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's been a long ride so far to get to this point, but the district's you know, it's and we'll been, definitely have player. We'll definitely be back uh, as the project goes. So we'll oh, yeah. some updates. <laughs> yeah. 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 As you can see from the timeline, we're gonna be building for a couple three years. So, so design is complete, right? We are 100% approved, DSA approved, ready to go. But, but the architect serves as, works for us, and to protect us, to make sure mm -hmm. that, that everything that's supposed to be built is being built the way it's supposed to be built. And, and that's one of the functions of the architect also. It's, it's, they're, they're still our partner until it's done. And they're the ones actually sign up to submit the DSA to make sure, you know, prepare to make sure that we, we've done it. We have different people looking, along with uh, DSA inspectors, making sure that everything is being done according to plan to the code also. So we have a lot of people looking working for us to make sure things are done correctly. The point, the errors, so many change orders and things that were done on the uh Regalis project. Oh, we, have, we have bad plan, we'll be talking to Jim, but uh, we have we're very we, confident. We, we have, have a very, very, very good track record. We're doing a lot yeah. of work here uh, up front. Is it to I, yeah, I think that Larry touched upon that last presentation of all the work back and forth uh, a lot of work of looking at the plans, reviewing them, spending extra time to really go in so that we could avoid that so that we went to bid and had good plans to go to bid. It's been a real team effort by everybody, but we, we do a very good set of plans where we know what we're doing. So I'm really in depth. Yeah. Just to make sure you make very good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank so I'll just move along if it's okay for the second presentation. I think we've cut some of your time off of this. Uh, yeah. It's okay, so, I'll try and make it quick. At the last, uh, the last CBOC meeting, there was uh, questions regarding the procurement process, and Roseanne has put together a PowerPoint presentation, and, and asked it along with Eric, and they'll be presenting to you. So thank you, Roseanne. Thank you. Well, my name is Roseanne McLeod, and I'm the Director of Purchasing and I oversee the warehouse, the purchasing department, and the repro graphics department. The um, items that you have in front of you were assembled in our repro graphics department. The purchasing department is responsible for purchasing the appropriate items at the price that is most cost effective while meeting all legal and internal control requirements. And one of the legal um, requirements is the bid process. Approval of request to go out to bid by board is required for public projects in excess of $175,000. And what is considered a public project, okay? A public project is defined by the act as the construction, reconstruction, erection, alteration, renovation, um, so on and so forth, as um, is evidence in the Roland High School Additions Projects, which was, which was just presented. So that's a project that um, one of the projects that we've just recently gone out to bid. And once it's approved for us to go out to bid, we advertise the invitation um, to bidders once a week for two consecutive weeks and 14 days prior to the bid opening in the newspaper in the legal section. And the one that we usually use is the San Gabriel Valley Tribune. It's our local newspaper. And it's um, the master relation. Bid process. What is CUPCA? The California, it is the California Uniform Public Construction Accounting Act program, which allows participating agencies to streamline the process and hold us to a higher standard. As participants, as we must pre-qualify contractors. We also send an invitation to our pre-qualified contractors on our CUPCA program. And that outside with the um, advertisement? Yes, it is. It's also they're put on our district's website once we show which ones are our pre-qualified contractors. Okay. Pre-qualification is required for both our general contractors and the subcontractors, which uh, they'll be um, using. 
and we, I brought this packet for everybody so you can see for the information that must be filled out by our, by our contractors and our subcontractors. Once pre-qualified, we have to maintain the list by trade. So all the plumbers, all the general contractors, the A licensed engineers, And the bid process criteria, which must be which must be submitted in this pre-qualification packet. So the contractors um, need to submit their statement of experience. They must um, notarize statement of bondability, notarize statement of insurability, their financial statement and accountant's release letter, which um, which ensures that they will not go bankrupt in the middle of one of our projects. And we also, they also need to be uh, licensed um, California contractors. And they gave us their number, where we just don't take it at face value. We go on our website and we check to make sure that they, in fact, um, have that license um, active. And um, okay. we're going to show you how to go online, but we don't have any time for that. So I gave you the website. So so do, you, do you want to go through this? How's your time? Is it OK? Is she shows you how to go online. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we want you to see fully exactly what happened in our yeah. district. So we check to make sure that they're um, insured. So we picked one of our contractors, which is GDL. So we go into, we put through their license. And this is something that I encourage also as homeowners and on the personal use to use contractors, which are licensed, because this will ensure that um, they're bondable and that they, um, and the, yes. So you want to take us a step back? Okay, so, what, so, what we're so um, we put in the contractor's license number in there. So it has all advertisement already? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, and see this contractor is GDL Best Contractor. So it says the license is current and active. And their classification of license is their G, which is general painting, hardware, doors, gates, and plumbing, and they're bondable, and they've got workers comp, and it tells you who is the qualifying one, you know, there's their workman's comp certificate too, and who, Everest National Insurance Company, so I can call the company if need be too. Okay. The next thing also is that they have to also, um, they have to, every year, the department, they have to uh, pay a fee to be a member of the Department of Industrial Relations to also bid on our projects. And the reason they have to do that is because of the Department of Industrial Relations. See, you, you put the contractor's license number on there. Checks to make sure that they're paying the required prevailing wage. All right, and there it goes. He's registered, there's his registration number, so he's able to work on public projects. And they have to do this every single year for, and they have to pay a fee, the current fee is $300 and it's non-refundable. And again, we will not be able to use a, a contract unless That is correct. Mm -hmm. not only when we go out to bid, but it's any project that requires any public works. On the requisition, we require that they put the license number and the DIR number. And if it's not on there and they want to use this contractor, <coughs> then we go online and we check to make sure that that information is on there. And we also pre-qualify them. How about if you choose a contractor, you know, they start with all work, but, you know, sometimes you think of the trouble violation or whatever, so how do you handle that? Um, we don't hire a contractor that does not have a contractor's license and that does not have so you say like a spin package. You know when you have to spin it, but you have a contractor and they fall through, and you got to spin it to another contractor? 
guys have ever experienced that? Is what she's asking. If the contractor, first of all, we don't hire anybody unless if they meet other requirements. And if they fall, if they're not able to complete the job, if it's um, if it's something that's over twenty five thousand dollars, then they're um, they then we go after their bond in order to finish the job. Like for example, I'll show you the next slide. Uh, let's see. So um, so district may award the contract to the responsive um, responsible bidder submitting the lowest responsive bid, or we can also reject all bids and start all over. I'll explain to you in the next slide. Okay. Responsiveness is determined on the face of the bid. So when they turn in their bid, they'll give you the bid amount. So they say, I'm going to build this, um, the Roland High School Additions Project for this amount. And they have to have, um, there's certain, um, the bid bond, the non collusion affidavit, and certain other documents. All right? And then we do all the reference checks. Then the Board of Trustees has the ultimate authority of the approval process. So once we choose the contractor, then, then the Board, then we submit it for approval. All right, so once we choose the contractor, they have to submit all, once, and it's board, he's board approved, then they have to submit the insurance certificates required naming the district as additionally insured. So in case something happens, we have insurance, the payment bond and performance bond. So they, so if something does happen, we can use the bond as um, funds to pay the labor that wasn't finished or that's outstanding or the materials that were supplied for that job. So does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, go on. Okay, all right. And then also the prevailing wage certificate, which he's um, certifying that he will be paying the, the prevailing wage and the workers' compensation in case something happens on the job, they have an accident, they have their insurance, and we as a district are not liable. And also fingerprinting, because we need to make sure that the safety of our, of our students and staff. The Board of Trustees has the sole authority to approve contracts for the district. So once the, um, once the contractor is board approved, then we can enter into, a, into the agreement. We can sign the agreement. Uh, board policy allows only the following personnel to enter into an agreement on behalf of the district, which is the superintendent, the assistant superintendent of administrative services, at services and human resources, and the director of purchasing as it pertains to purchase orders. Okay, so what was um this set? Okay. You know, I you know novellas, the building you know this uh, novellas in real, right? The building something under the bridge, right? Oh it took like two or three years, right? Until now still construction. I heard uh, the one of the contractor he paid during the construction they can pay. Oh they bankrupt? Yes, oh, okay. so I don't know, probably switch it to, to another builder. So I just I just have a question. If we choose a contractor, because our project is free, they have one bit, they, they have everything for you, right? Right. They have insurance, they have a bond, everything. But somehow, you know, it happened, the bank was. So how do we sit? How we can address um, the issue? And we also have their bonds to go after too. So we still have their bonds. We still have this insurance that was that it, that that is paid for a hundred percent of the project. And that's paid before the project. That's paid before the project. Bond. And that's also required to be able to work in the yes. too. So that's what you go after to. That, and that's what you, you, you hire another company. You, you, you still have. To, I guess we have the question: Would you still have to go through the bid process <laughs> because because. Um, it's still the, it's still going to be over the amount, the threshold, or is it considered an emergency where there is some ed code that allows for? We have emergency ed code that allows for um, to go out to uh, seek remedy without following this whole process. <coughs> However, it requires board approval, mm -hmm. and um, there are projects that if the if they do fall through, then we would have to start the process all over again. <coughs> Delay yes. Project, yes. Right? yes. Uh -huh. Because of delays, but that's a, that we have to consult with our legal department. Well, and just 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 so that sometimes we ask questions that are the what if questions, which are really good questions. 
But um, <laughs> in your history, because you've been being, you're a, you've been a director of personnel. Eric, I'll have the same question to you since you've been a, a director in, uh, in fiscal. How many years have you done this and have you ever seen that in the school district having that happen with a contractor? In my um, 30, 31 years, I've really never seen that happen because we take all the measures to safeguard the taxpayers' money. But, but are, they could, you know, you could, someone go bankrupt, you know, something, uh, yeah. something. Uh, uh, well, uh, 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 stop uh, notices uh, and things against payments. We'll start to get some information in the fiscal. You know, people file stop the, notices because they're owed money. Because they're subcontractors. They're subs owed money, they're not getting paid. Yeah. So we'll start to know, oh, this contractor may be having cash flow issues because there's subs from other jobs, not our jobs, are like telling us you don't pay them before you do that. Yeah, yeah. but see, that's why we have our bonds. Then we, we contact the surety company, we let them know this contractor is not paying his subs, or this contractor is not paying the company that he bought the materials from, and then the surety company starts releasing the funds so we can take care of remedying the situation. So, you, of course, I know you work in work. Your job, you're very careful to select select contractor, but that's one part. But at the same time, we have to prepare. When worst, worst thing happen, we still have some plan. Yes, there, we do. Right? Because this project takes three years long enough, you take another three years, okay. and then everybody will have more headache. Yeah. You should just be able, to, I mean, all the infrastructure for planning and everything is right there. I do know that whoever's monitoring, whoever the program manager is or the project manager that's going over it, they're going to start seeing it when they have weekly or bi-weekly meetings. They're going to see what the burn rate is, meaning how much money they're burning in the beginning, if it's front-loaded, if what's going on. Like you said, if they're paying the contractors, if they catch it soon enough, or if even if they catch it later on, she explained that that, that bond that they have is enough money to actually start the process over and get a new contractor. So, so the there's a safety. The insurance. It's insurance. It's yeah, insurance. It's insurance. It's just like if you have an yeah, accident, if you have a, you have your car, okay? If you have an accident, if you have an accident, okay? Um, you have insurance, so they can fix your car, or if need be, you can get another car. But we have insurance to remedy different kinds of situations that come up. The Nissan brings a good point. It would take more time. Yes, but it would get done yes. because there would be a bond to protect the district still be to make sure that there would be money to pay for it by their contractor. But it would take more time. I just curious about some of How come it takes that long to be able to do You want it done in one year, too. I already knew that. No, three years already. Well, but part of it is yeah, also that you're they're welcome. not. No, no, but, but also, you no, know, but just, just for your information, because I'm not, I don't know anything about contractors, but. It just makes sense if you're building on a new piece of parcel of land that's nothing on it, no kids, nobody involved, it's going to be faster. But if you have a whole bunch of teenagers jumping over the construction site, you know, you're, you're going to be limited in terms of your time, noise, in terms of what you can do during the day, you know, etc. You know, that makes sense to me. I know in other countries they do it in two seconds, but then they do it in can't really disclose any information yet because we're still checking the references and we're checking all the background, making sure that everything is up to par before we can move forward in a recommendation to the board as to who will be awarded. There is an intended dispute period that takes place and it's, it's not in our best interest to discuss anything with the good to be good. Harry was at the bid uh, opening. He was there. And we we'll need time to hopefully take it to the next four meetings. Yes. The two important Yes. However, I can tell you that they were on our pre-qualified um, contractors list. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So our this is an action. Thank you, Fiscal, <clears throat> fiscal statement uh, of approval. So. Yes, yeah, so for you is talking about this. Yeah, the is, the, is the book again. Yeah, the name keeps changing. Is it this? Uh, uh, the update should just be the month. I'm sorry, it says financial statement.
financial statement. I have a, a vote on this. Well, I would say, you think you can go through the motion if there's a question. Mr. Mitchell Hart, Mr. Hart, is here, here available to talk about it. Were you going to present or not? No, I mean, it's the same book you got last year, updated through the month of April for the project status. It also coordinates with the consumers. I see. So, there won't be much change because it's a month and we don't have a whole lot of big things moving right now. But it is the month of April. Statement that hasn't been reconciled back mm -hmm. against our people stuff. See if I need yeah. to so 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 We need to, if we want to ask questions, I just made a motion to uh, call it in for motion. Motion to approve the committee on Motion to approve. I got a problem with that. <laughs> I couldn't get a question. I actually last meeting had a note to. Abstain. And for the same reason that Carla, what she said was my exact thoughts. She had trouble with it. You know, and I thought about it some more. And I said, you know, I didn't do it because it wasn't a big deal and I didn't want to be a troublemaker. And then I thought about it some more and I said, that's a terrible reason. And I hope nobody else on the committee is doing that. <laughs> that you know, we're, we're here to give our, our honest opinion on things, and you know, my opinion is I have absolutely no reason to vote no on this, but I don't understand why I'm voting. You know, have to vote, and 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 to vote yes on it seems to me that I'm saying something that this is. The, the information that we requested, or that it's accurate, or I, I don't understand it. So if I don't, you know, if I can't vote yes and I can't vote no, well, it's a good reason to abstain. Well, can we just say that we received it? Yeah. it? Well, I'm not, I would sign it. You know, that we received, that the, the, received the report, but it doesn't. the whole reason for us voting on it is so that it's a line item in the minutes that we've received a financial report. I know, but it's not that we approve it or we disapprove it. We don't have the right it. to approve or disapprove. Yeah, we just received yeah, it. That's not a bond, that's it's not it, an oversight. Yeah. They're okay. sharing, they're making, it, 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 what they're basically doing is they're sharing they're being just clear and transparent with the information yeah. that has to deal with the budget, and they're showing it to us. Well, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we don't get to say yeah. yay or nay. That yeah, it's just we that we receive of how it. they're spending the money, just no, that they're doing it, and it's they have to find it. Maybe it just needs to be re reworded. Right. Like, oh, instead oh, of saying I, approved I, receiving I, financial statement, you can, uh, uh, you can say, go ahead, go ahead. Receive financial we statement. have you know, receive something like that, you know, something. Letters. Motion to receive financial statement. Wonderful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what it says. Approved. So I'll, I'll second that so we can do that. Yeah. They're talking about, they're talking about the, the title. Oh, the, right. okay. That's, yeah, that's wrong. Okay. It's just, a, I think it's a, yeah, just change the motion. Um, motion to receive. Can I get a second I'll on second any that. change? I'm second. Oh. Yes. I like that much better. Yeah. 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 So motion to receive. Financial statement. statement. Yeah, so it just says we received it. Let's call the question. Vote. Oh, that's his job. <laughs> well, but any member can call a question, even though I'm not the ah, member. Correct. I'm just a, a member of the yeah. What do you do, Rob Roberts? You're doing a good job. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, motion to vote? Oh, we, are, we have a motion now. Now we just vote. We now we vote. Oh, we vote. Okay. I was waiting for you. To Someone went by. Someone went by me. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. You made it unanimous. No. Makes it easier for. Somebody doing the recording. If I, if I may, I would like to offer, if anyone would like to go into detail with this, you have to please make an appointment with myself or Eric, and we will sit down with you to review it with you, to discuss it. Um, 
I know you'll not be looking for accuracy, but you're looking for just the whole thing to understand it. So um, complete respect that. I'm more than willing to sit down with you to, to go through it. And well, that's why we also added section five. I'm sorry, four. We voted to change the date. We have not the motion itself. We have not. Yes, correct. Okay. Have we reached to make a month comments? Well, hold on. We had a next. No, we did that. Okay. Oh, we still haven't done that? I thought we voted on We that. changed the name. We changed the name. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> not, okay. Can we get a, a motion to receive? I so move. First and second here. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Wendy? Aye. Okay. Aye. Approved. Okay. okay. Now, committee member comments. I, I would like, we, we've had an awful lot of good information. I, I think that this is, uh, I've actually gone through the minutes of the meetings for the last 10 years. You know, I, I did that not once, twice. And ask me why three times. Uh, this is probably the best trained and most informed committee that we've had in the last 10 years. Okay. So uh, I, I, I don't know what, with all this training, that uh, you, you still have questions about. Uh, I, I don't know who or has. Uh, gone to the websites of the, the, the California League Bond Oversight Committee or West Coast Contra Costa County. Uh, so I, I'd like, you know, at the, at the next meeting to, to have uh, put that on the agenda to find out where everybody's at, where, where you want to go, and, and we, we need to get some business done, you know. Uh, because we, we, we haven't done an annual report from the last uh, uh, audits last year. We need to do a report to the community, to the, to the public, and, and, and to the school board, and we haven't done that. Uh, and in the 2006 uh, bond audit is closing out, and you know, uh, if, if we've got any questions about that, we, we need to, you know, uh, get that done. You know, so uh, I'd like to be able to put that on the agenda. If does anybody has any suggestions or, or things, questions that they would like to, to add to the next meeting agenda? I have questions. So how do they put the agenda? Who do they have agenda? How do they do the agenda? Alex and I get together and talk oh, okay. about so it. So if we have any concerns, so how do I just... Oh, okay. I, right? This is the reason why we put the put yeah. the, the comments section. Yeah. So if you have anything to put, it's easier to... This way everyone has an opportunity to be able to say what they want on the agenda. So this just for my notes. This, I want to make sure what you're asking for is an agenda item to write the... to write the... Um, the hang report that will be presented to the Board of Trustees so that in that will be flexible to talk about where we stand as a board, where you at, where you stand as a committee, what you feel you need more, what you know, where we're, where we're going, so you have more of a, you know, like a focus of what you're, what you're working on. Because it's kind of hard to, you can't really agendize. We're going to talk. I mean, it, it has to be like a, a thing. So, in the in the in the content of writing the report, that will be a reflection piece. Then we, you guys, can sit down and we can. You guys can talk about that to write a report. I, I, I want to talk about the yeah. California League of Bond Oversight Committee. I want to talk about the Contra Costa County websites. Okay. Uh, 
And incidentally, according to the, the, the Brown Act, anybody can ask for something to be added to the agenda a week ahead of time. A week, right? A week, okay. yes. Yeah. According to the Brown Act. Well, no, I'm, see, I, I think that there's, we have a responsibility as uh, board members, CBOC members, to also um, not expend a lot of money in what we're doing ourselves. In other words, time is of essence for me, you know, because this okay. to me is taking a lot of time for my, my own business, whatever I have to do. Having said that, I think if somebody's interested, like you, you should give us a report, you know, read whatever you're going to read, and you give us a report of, of five or ten minutes at the next meeting, and then we, we can discuss it. I think but that would be... This is beyond the agenda. Yeah, so, I, but I think if you, yeah. you know, it doesn't mean everybody has to do that. Right. You know, because we want to help each other. A report on what? <laughs> a report on what? So on the contra, on what you're interested in, on the contra, you know, just do it. It's just, what it's not even, just do it, you know? And I, but I think also, in general, not just about this, but just in general, I just really, we need to have also respect for everybody, our fellow CBOC members, I think we have to have respect for the staff, you know, they're busy people. If we expect them to do a good job, we shouldn't be making their job harder as well. Now. Just a, this is just a comment, okay? I'm probably in the minority, I don't care. But I don't know if we have to meet every month, maybe every other month, that's just throwing it out there. Number two is, this is a lot of printing, maybe, you know, there could be another method, or it doesn't have to be printed every month, or we should just get, get put it, or just have a place that we get access, and I don't know, or just not necessarily every month, that's, to me, it seems like a lot of non work um, and you know we should be conscious of that because I've worked in uh, public institutions. Just a okay. Wendy, anything? Yeah, just uh, uh, well in this report like uh, you mentioned not a lot of changes maybe you can just email to us before the meeting. Mm -hmm. So it's we, already on. We have this online and every month it's like I said it's being updated. It's after, right? Actually, this even even if there's not a meeting, uh -huh. we are putting it up so that you can you can see it so before people, the meeting. Before the before the meeting, Is correct, Eric? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Is before the meeting. Like say, yeah, it's it's been up there I believe, since Tuesday. Uh -huh. Okay. Or maybe, or maybe early Wednesday morning. Okay. Depending on how it refreshes, they have you go into the meetings under minute and agendas. There's mm -hmm. two items. So going so, to the point of Carla, though, I have also had Eric working on the 160 million dollar budget to present. So we have to prepare for for a budget for the next uh, for the next yeah, for I mean, three so years. Yeah, I mean, so we want them so to do a good job. Ideally, we would like to have this posted as soon as the closest to, to the beginning of the month as possible. But we we have other tasks to do too. So. Um, I, I do like what you're saying, Carla. And if we could get the updated pages to add to the book, yes. I'm thinking any significant changes or uh, any changes. Then, changes then, period. Then, then we or can or maybe. If we could just get the link sent to our email and we just open it up. And that's, this, you know what, that's a great idea. And then, you know, number one, that would save paper. Number two, maybe you would make a list of five different things yeah. that were changed. Please see page 10, 12, 14, or something like that. In other words, something that would be less labor intensive, you know, less, you know, you know, less in that, and then it would just put on us that a couple of days before the meeting we would have to go open it up and look at it. So we could send a link. Can I ask yeah. for people who prefer a, a hard copy? Who would like a hard copy that we could first hard copy? I, I do prefer a hard copy because part of That's doing this and being in the community, uh, sorry, out in the community, um, whoever wants to take access and look at what I'm presented with. They're, they're more than welcome to flip through so it. Who, who you, yes. uh, a lot of different parents from the, the high school, the elementary school, when we're out in the car, at the park, they, they do flip through it and look and see where things are going, opposed to not always having computer access. So I do appreciate that. So send one hard copy and the rest of the link, or what would you prefer to do? I'd rather have a link. Link, link. Because yeah. I'm actually, I have a hard time with computer. Okay. No problem. Like for, for the time being, I could change my mind later. 
So for the time being, is it possible, Pete? We send a link. Uh, you mentioned everybody on the link. Well, no, I don't need. Oh, How about everyone gets the link? Everyone gets the link. Yeah, two hard, two hard copies. Thank you. Okay. Because I don't have any more room in my closet. Well, I think I have one computer and three children doing homework, so the days that I get to touch the computer are rare. And bring it from my phone. I have so much room. Both my cell phone is stuck. So I'm fine. Give me your I'm phone. just looking forward to the new <laughs> presentation. Take your shorts. No, <laughs> okay. Do it like that. That, that now is on the agenda now. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 And this is an opportunity that's in Sacramento on May 31st. And I apologize if there's any board members in the audience. We have not invited them up yet first, which we should have. Um, this is uh, the California League of Bond Oversight Committee on May 31st. This is right here. Is, is having um, their annual conference. It uh, begins at 9.30, goes to 3 o'clock. Um, I've checked to see if there's uh, flights available. There's flights available, so it could be, it'd be a long day. It'd be flying out uh, to Ontario at 7 in the morning and um, attending uh, the workshop and also coming back, flying back at 5.30 in the evening. Um, just wanted to if you're interested in attending, no, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. And this is, uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Peterson for, you know, when we met, you know, brought this to my attention. And I, I really appreciate Dr. Mitchell when I spoke with her about this. Um, to say, yes, this was something that would be a good expense for, for the committee, if the committee wanted to, to, to attend. Um, we'll also be inviting um, one or two board members also to attend if they if they would like to attend. Um, so it'd be I think a good opportunity to be able to you know learn more about the role of the um, of the CBOC. So I want to put it out for discussion. If anybody um, if you're able to attend, if you would let me know, uh, I know Harry has already said that he would like to attend, and I will be attending. So if you're interested, let me know. And then if you think you can do it, we totally respect that people are working and we understand. And, and I would hope that if you can attend at the next meeting, we would be able to, to share and to bring handouts and to bring information to you also. So this budget will from the district, right? This will be from, from, the, from the district budget. You are going to take it for us? We would do all the, 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 the uh, we're going to take it to the board for approval first, though, of course. So this way. So when is the day that they told me? Oh, I don't know. Yesterday, maybe. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> it, uh, as soon as possible, because we would uh, like to see if we could add it to the agenda. This is how we were running a successful yeah, bond oversight. Um, I can't go, but I think it would be great for those who do to report back, you know, and no so that there would be, you know, I think, I think it would be the best way to I, do it. Like, it just, it, especially okay. just a couple of people who go to the I'm going to take it to work tomorrow okay. and try, um, but it's also the day after Memorial Day. I know. So, um, I can't give any guarantees. Uh, but thank you for the handout, and I will go up my chain command in the morning. Okay, so if you can let me know by tomorrow, great, I appreciate it. And completely, whatever if you can, can, we will try to bring back information. I won't be able to do this. I'm wrapping up for my construction during the summer. Oh, um, that's all I did. <laughs> We're all, trust me, this is, this is taking a three straight strain on me, too. <laughs> but completely respect that. Yeah. So, so right now, there's probably three maybes. Which would be good, and then that'll be a, a, enough, I think, to give a good report. Well, it'd be nicer too. So, what would it be a quorum also? So, we have the agenda item in here. Like that too, which, so, it actually appreciate that if it makes it a little more um, easier too. So, we have to take that into the meeting. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you
curious, logistically, meet here in Vanpool to the airport, um, or if, if we could, if we could meet here. It, I always like to keep expenses down, so one car in the parking lot is one one fee instead of four cars. So yes, I, I agree. And uh, as long as you don't mind having uh, me as your chauffeur, you okay. okay. <laughs> I do. I value cars too. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. George. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. I moved. I'm second. <laughs> All those in favor, say yes. Aye. 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 Okay, good job. Thank you. Thank you. 817. Sorry, we're going so long. Hey, I have these. Did you say that the district's going to pick up the tab for the airfare for the.